Welcome to Founders Club, the show for real estate entrepreneurs. But I do want to focus on what you said about basically there being a real estate crash. And I want to just talk about what that looks like in your mind, uh, like right now and maybe like a year from now. And then like in the future, what, what do you see happening? Well, we, we're, we're at the beginning of, you're, you're seeing the immediate I don't need an economist to tell me what's happening right now. 38% of listings have been removed from the marketplace. You have the lowest interest rates in the history of the United States of America, yet uh, mortgage applications have, have, have not really spiked. Like you get little temporary bit, bit bleeps. Uh, what, what I, had, I had a bunch of information on the housing market yesterday, but you know, what, what, is that, what does all that say? Why, why are 38% of the, oh, inventories are short. We don't have the inventory. You got plenty, you got homes all over the place. All, there's not a city in America that doesn't have a home for sale. Yeah. Like if, if I need a place to stay in America, I don't need, I don't need to go buy something. I, I can call somebody up. You got an extra room? We got empty bedrooms all over America. Okay. But that's not the issue. The issue is, do I want to still live in this house? See, the funny thing about a house is, you can't convince somebody not to buy the house they fall in love with and they know when they buy it. As much as they try to tell themselves they're going to live there for 30 years, they know they're not. They're I buying think, what, else, I think yeah. what else is interesting about right now too is people are home so much that they're, you know, maybe they live in a high rise condo and they don't want to live around people anymore. 100%. Or, you know, their, their house is now too small or their house is now too big and yeah. they just don't want to deal with it anymore. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And then also, you know, right after 9-11, what happened after 9-11 was the people, you had a housing boom in this country. <clears throat> the economists say it was because interest rates went down. But the truth is, it was because people were scared. And when people are scared, they introvert. And the best way to introvert is what? I want a nice place to live. You don't say when you're introverted and scared, you go home. You don't go to your car. Okay. People didn't go out and buy cars after 9-11. They went and bought homes. They went into debt because they're like, if I'm going to die, in this case, if I'm going to get hit by terrorists or in the case of Corona, if I'm going to get sick, well, I could just be at home and I could be protected there with just the family. So I think that, that one thing that is really going to, you know, make homes, particularly suburban homes, uh, do well in this cycle is that people want space mm. and they want to be protected. I, I live in a condo, you know, that would not be my preference today. Con condos, anything with an elevator just took a whack. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think we're seeing the same thing here in San Diego. We're seeing a lot of people um, kind of not as excited about the downtown living and kind of looking more at, like you said, bigger space, bigger yard, um, you know, some space to just get outside, get some fresh air and, and do that whole thing. Yeah. And, and, and so, and they're going to be willing to pay for that. Um, so, but, but let's say the guy lives downtown San Diego right now and he wants to move out to Rancho. Well, you know what? Hey, dude, this is the perfect time, bro. You're going to take a thirty, forty thousand dollar hit on your place. Okay, let's say the place was six hundred grand. February, you thought it was worth six hundred. You removed it from the market. I made a phone call. Hey, bro, I'm going to show you how to get your full six hundred and make two million. Do I have your <laughs> Go <attention>? on. <laughs> Go on. Good. I'm going to be over to your place. I know what number you're in. I'm going to meet you at your place today. I'm bringing a mask and gloves. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I go over there and I do. A, I sit down with a piece of paper and a pen. I, you got to quit talking to people now. You got to show them the math. People don't go on the internet and listen to people. They go on the internet and look at stuff. So I'm gonna be like, look, here's the deal. Your deal was worth 600k in February. Okay, we should we should have sold it in February, but we didn't. I don't know if I can mirror this. Let me see if I can mirror it. Uh, no, I don't know how to do that. View. Let me see. Okay, so, so look, here's the deal. You're going to pay $18,000. I'm sorry, you're going to pay $36,000 for broker fees. You need to show him that first so he doesn't bitch about it. Yeah. Okay, that's not his problem. By the way, that's not the biggest problem he's got. Okay? Your, your fees are nothing compared to his other problems. His payments on this place right now, let's say they're $4,000 a month. It's going to take him at least 300 days to sell this. 10 months. That's $40,000 and a bunch of uncertainty because I don't know what's going to happen. What else is he going to have to pay? You need to fix the kitchen over there. That's 70 grand. Okay. I'm telling you, you're not going to sell it with the kitchen looking the way it is. I know you don't want to hear this from me. I can handle all this for you, by the way. I'll fix the kitchen myself. Just listen to me. Hear me out. 
Okay. What else do we got? What what other fees would I have here? Uh, it's kind of hard to see there, but I you think you've got most of them. You got repairs. You've got any um, uh, termite so insurance, maybe HOA, whatever else. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So, so now we're at one hundred forty-six thousand. So so look, four hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars. Okay, I'm going to sell your deal for four sixty-four today, and that's like getting six hundred grand a year from now. Same money, man. It is the same exact money. Okay, mm. but this is the way we're going to make it up. Okay, I have a place for you in Rancho Santa Fe. You told me exactly what you want. I have three places, and I know we're going to steal them. Okay, yeah, you took a little hit here. We're going to we're going to make it up on the next house. Okay, it's a two million dollar house. We can buy it for a million four. You save six hundred. Wait till this thing goes away. Everybody just like you is going to want to be in a suburban home in Rancho Santa Fe, and you're going to make yourself a million or two million dollars over the next ten years and live where you want to live. But you got to know how to pitch. That was a great pitch, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. To get all the new episodes of Founders Club, subscribe now. 